Happy hump day. Happy hump day to your baby. Yes, happy hump day, y'all. Like, share, comment, and hit that subscribe button. Hit that bell to be notified when your girl upload another video. Oh, thank you in advance for watching the video in the ad till the end. Yes, thank you, you guys. I appreciate you for coming back. And tuning in for another Car Chronicle. Let's go ahead and jump right into it, y'all. I want to talk about intimidation today. Being intimidated. And why do people intimidate you? What is it? Why do they do it? Okay, what is it? What do they have to prove? What's going on with them that they feel that they have to intimidate you? They have to do certain things to try to punk you or scare you or get you to feel a certain type of way. Intimidation. To be intimidated. Whew, that's a horrible feeling. It's a horrible feeling to be on the other end of it. Okay, and I say that because I really feel that that's what's happening to me at work a little bit. Okay, and um, <clears throat> excuse me, and I'm speaking today to people that have jobs or in school. Or they have a place where they have to be. Now, intimidation can happen within family units and all that. But I want to gear this towards people that are out with jobs, career people, you know, working people. I don't want to, I can't, I, I, I will jump and say some things to about in your personal life too. But right now, this is in the work field stuff. When you're at work, for one, you got to be there because if you didn't, you wouldn't. You need the job. Because if you didn't need it, you wouldn't put up with any of this. You wouldn't put up with someone treating you like this, talking to you any kind of way, flexing their power. You wouldn't take that if you didn't need to be there. So you have to be there. So you have to deal with it. And you have to find a way to deal with it. You can't just up and quit your job. Some people just up and quit. And then they go through all these changes. They don't have money for this. Don't have money for that. And then they start looking for any kind of job. And then they get a job that's lower pay, more work. It, even worse off than where you were. It's not easy to get a job. It's so many people out of work. There's hundreds of people that will be applying for one position, your position. You don't want to be on the other side of that line. You don't want to be on the other side of that. You don't want anything worse than what you have. So when you think the grass is greener and you just jump over to the other side because you don't like certain things here. So you just leave. And then you end up in a worse situation. Now that could be work, home, personal life, relationships. People you're with, any decision that you have to make that you think is better. Okay. So I said that to say this. For many years, I was, I had to be passive. I had to take on that type of personality type at work. <clears throat> 
excuse me, sometimes we have to take on a personality trait in certain situations. Now, and I say that to say this, a passive person, everything is okay. Even though they're, it's not okay. Even though they're not okay. And the reason why I had to turn passive is because as a child growing up, my mother always said, your mouth. And she would stop like that and just look at me and don't say your mouth. And she cut you with her eyes. That's how my grandmother was. We need to bring that type of stuff back. But anyway. My mouth, I know me. And if I cut loose, I wouldn't have a house right now today. I wouldn't be driving in a, you know, nice, reliable, cool car. I'd be in a bucket. Wouldn't be able to afford no car, no, for no decent ride. I wouldn't be working in the field. I work. I'd probably be stuck up somewhere in a mediocre job because I would never keep a, a good job. I would never keep a job. I'll always be broke. I, oh, I wouldn't because my mouth will get me in trouble. So what I have to do to get myself together is I need to be passive. I need to take on that trait. I have to change some things about myself. So maybe I have to be more passive than aggressive. Okay? Because I know really I'm, 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 my, I'm, my mouth can be very aggressive. I'm not a physically aggressive person, but my mouth, I don't think before I speak. And I can own that. Sometimes I just say the first thing that comes to my goddamn head. I just laugh. Bleh. I have no control over that. But guess what? I wanted to change that for myself. Because not only would it damage me as far as my livelihood, it would damage me personally in my personal life with family and friends. Who wants to be alone in the world? finally learn how to park back there? Yep. Good morning. Good morning. I'm so sorry, you guys. Somebody knocked on my window. I was deep in something. And I'm, you seen what happened. I'm leaving. I don't know where I was. I don't know where I was. I, I When I get in my zone, This is why I need to get up early in the morning and do my talks at home. Because I'm sorry, you guys, I don't know where I was. Oh, in my personal life, I had to become, I had to change some things about myself and become more passive than aggressive. Because who wants to be alone in the world and without any friends? Without, who, who how does that feel? To know people don't want you to be around. They don't want to invite you over. They don't want to uh, spend time with you. They don't want to deal with you. And the only reason why your parents do because they have to. That doesn't feel good. That doesn't feel good. So if I didn't change that, it would affect, it would affect my livelihood. And my personal life. And my personal well-being. What inspired this uh, conversation today is because. At work I have, to, I have to be passive. And I have, to, I feel like I have to walk on eggshells. That's what it's become to be. And not because of me. 
is because when I stood up, I finally take a stand and stand up for myself and speak up and advocate more for myself. I don't just sit there and, and take things that I know that is unfair and I know that it's wrong. And there are times I supervisor would just talk to me down. I'm being really honest, not this department, but a, a previous department. African-American had to prove her point. She needed to flex her wings. She needed to feel power. OK, she needed to feel that she had it. It made her feel good. Because she could control things. And we have to do what she say. Because she's a supervisor. And you can get written up. And if you continually to get written up. You get suspended. What comes after that? You get fired. So you got to do what she say. Because she is a supervisor. But just because you are a supervisor. And you wear a title. You're working under a title doesn't give you the right to belittle me and make me feel less than. Don't step on my back to help yourself get some confidence and some self-esteem. Don't use me as, don't, I don't want to be, don't, 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 don't take advantage of me. And knock mine down. Okay, don't use me to help you. You feel better about yourself. Don't use me to help you gain confidence and self-esteem. You got to dig in within yourself and get that. But that's a weak person. They ain't strong, they weak. Because when you're strong, you don't need to break nobody else down. To make yourself feel better. A strong person will dig inside their self and pull out everything they can. Throw out of everything just to find what they need to help them feel good about themselves. Just like when you're digging through something, you're looking for your wallet you bought two years ago. You know you put it in that bag over there in the corner. But that bag is full of clothes now, sweaters, clothes, all kind of junk. And you're pulling everything out because you're looking for that wallet. You need the wallet. Well, you need your self-esteem. You need your confidence. Go into your bag of junk. Go into your bag of junk. Dig in your bag and pull out everything you need until you find what you need to feel better about yourself. You don't have to knock another person down when you're strong. You can compliment somebody else. Just because that person got their self-esteem, that should just make you want yours. Not knock them down. Only a weak person, a weak-minded individual would do that. And or intimidate you. This is of anybody in general that you have ran into. These are traits of what they do. And the hardest thing is, is when it happens to you at work. You got so much riding on this job, your livelihood. And what comes in with your livelihood 
You need your medical. You might get sick. You may have kids. You need your medical. Your kids need things. You need a roof over your head. You want to keep getting your hair done, your nails. You've been living a certain type of way. Your livelihood. That's a lot riding on that. So what do you do? When certain situations come up. You don't always have to give a reply. Now, if there is a reason to give a, 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 a reply, take a deep breath before you give your reply. Just take a deep breath. Because sometimes when we're angry, even though we're speaking the truth, when people say, oh, I'm sorry I said that. No, you're not. Because when you're angry, that's what pushes you to say the things. How you really feel about certain things. That gives you that push. Then you can just say it. Just like some people get drunk and say it. Some people get angry and say it. Because they, they're stuffers. They stuff things in and hold it in. <clears throat> Excuse me. That's why theirs come out in anger. Okay. Now, you may not have meant how it came out and the other words that were surrounding the main word or the main reasons. You know, we, we throw extra on there. We always say what we say and then we might say with your fat ass, you funky bitch, or you, you, you no good nigga. That's, that's the extra. <laughs> That you, you you really don't mean it, but you just got to cut them down a little bit more. You got to throw some salt on that cut. You cut them real good, but now you want to throw that cherry on top and say with your fat ass. Okay, they, they just was saying that. That little thing. And we always trip off the wrong thing. We trip off. We don't trip off of the main thing they said. We tripping off. Who you calling fat nigga? Okay, that's that's where we go. What well, 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 fuck it? We stop. We 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 didn't forgot about the real thing. See, that's what we do. We focus on the wrong things. Okay, the main thing that was said that we really need to address. See, that's when you're in denial. You can't accept what they said. It was just you just don't want to deal with it. So you rather deal with them, them calling you fat. You rather kind of sweep around the bushes. You ain't even sweeping the bushes. You standing in front of the bush. You, you going around in the circle. You, you sweeping around the bush. You just sweeping the leaves. In, okay. That's what you doing. That's in your personal life. But let me jump back to if you're at work and that happens. See, when you finally stand up for yourself, you it, doing it professionally, let's say that, they're not used to it. A person that can get away with intimidating you and you've been helping them feel good all this time. You've been helping them flex their wings. And now you're going to say something in defense of yourself? And they think, oh, hell no. No, she didn't. Who the hell does she think she is standing up for herself? Oh, no, they can't accept criticism. People that give a lot of it, they can't always, they can't always receive it back. So when you stand up for yourself and say, hey, look, that's not fair. You know, you, that you, you, you know, I don't appreciate, I, you know, I don't like that you did this. I don't like what you do that. Show me where it says. OK, you start pulling it, pulling it back, put, putting it back on them. Show me where it says. In the handbook, in the procedures. 
Okay. Show me where. Not just handbook procedures. Is anywhere, anything. Show me. Tell me. Don't just. So when you stand up for yourself, they don't like that. So they got to do other things to you. Sometimes people say and do things to bait you, to hook you, to get you to go there. They want you to. They want you to. A lot of times they want you to do it when you're at work. They just, they can never find any reason to write you up because you're always on point. You're always on point. Because you think before you speak. Mm. <clears throat> Excuse me. <laughs> you are, you're playing a chess game and you, you, you want a checkmate. So they can never, they can never, their moves, you always <laughs> come with a better move. Okay. So. They watch you even more and nitpick you, nitpick you. And then the people that they should do that for, go with, they don't do. They just get away with just everything. Creating a hostile work environment. <laughs> Being disruptive in meetings or just anywhere talk to you any kind of way just get away with everything today I was on the freeway on my way to work and I'm driving in my lane I'm in my lane this, I'm right here. This car just came swerving so fast and almost hit me just to get into another lane and get into my lane. Soon as that car got in my lane, they had to jump right back in that lane because my lane. See, they didn't know that my lane was getting ready to slow down. I already seen that. This person was just doing stuff, uh, wasn't thinking, wasn't paying attention. Just being reckless. Just being reckless. Sometimes people are reckless. And they don't want to say anything to that person. Because they 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 feel intimidated. They, they're not strong enough. So they pick on the passive people. The people that are nice. People that don't really stand up for themselves. Okay. Um, the moral to this story is think before you speak and react. Sometimes we have to change. We have to alter, not change. Alter is a better, better word. Alter our personality trait to match certain situations. We have to. We have to. So yesterday, the supervisor, have you ever, have you ever, I know you have, have you watched that movie, uh, uh, Halloween? Not Jason, Halloween, Michael Myers. Michael Myers was, it was the worst Psychopath. He was worse than Jason to me because he was more mental. Jason was reckless with his shit. You know, you just know you're going to get chopped up. He just chop you up. Not Michael Myers. Oh, he'll chop you up. But he do it slow. He stand there and watch you. And you just be talking and laughing and walking, la da la da la, just all willy nilly, just walking on down the street. And he right there in the bushes. He come out the bushes and he stand there and watch you walk down the street. He 
he was mental with his shit. So yesterday I was doing a different um, type of function that's rotated that a lot of us signed up to do. It's like extra and it's something different. And uh, I don't want to mention what it is, you know. So I noticed that the supervisor that's over this, I'm doing what I'm doing and I look up and that supervisor has just been watching me, waiting for me to make a mistake. See, I'm entitled to make a mistake. I'm supposed to be. But the way that they feel about me that mistake could turn into something. Oh, no, you can't do it anymore because you did this, you did that. I'm not entitled to make a mistake. And I, you know, so that he was watching me, waiting for me to make a mistake or waiting for something, you know, because with me, it would be a mistake, something I did wrong. Because I'm not, no, um, I'm not an outright. It wouldn't be nothing with behavior or anything like that. It'd be maybe I forgot to, uh, you know, a particular form or something I, I may have forgot that's uh, r related to uh, the work duty. Maybe I forgot to uh, make them answer number 15 or number 27. Something like a little mistake that could be easily. Oh, no, next time do this. Oh, no, you got to do that. Oh, no, I wouldn't have got that. Just waiting for me to do it. To have a reason. They sometimes, not just in a workplace either, sometimes people wait for a reason to say and do things to you that they're just really been wanting to do, but they just, they're weak minded people. They're insecure. They have low self esteem, no confidence. Something is going on with them that they have to use you to help themselves build themselves up because they don't have it at home. They don't have it within themselves. They don't have it. So they have to mess with the uh, passive or the, you know, they have to mess with somebody else. You don't necessarily have to be a passive person. It can be anybody. But I'm just referring to, to, to me right now. This situation. Because it's a good situation. I'm quite sure anybody watching that works a 9 to 5 in an office. And you ain't got to even be in an office. But working in the working world can relate to this. So I look up. And you know what I did? I just smiled and kept doing what I was doing that was right. I, I knew what I was doing. I ignored it and just smiled and said, hey, oh, I didn't see you there, hey. Yes, it's very uncomfortable. And um, it's wrong. But then sometimes in life we have to stop and say, okay, you know what? That's not about me. That's about that person. Everything is not always about you. We have to say that to ourselves. And then we ask ourselves, is that what he's doing really worth my time and energy? If something is not, just think about it. Am I going to benefit from clapping back on that? Hmm. No, I'm not. Because then I can be looking like I'm, you know, he's just standing there. That's his job. He's supposed to, he's supposed to, you know, they're changing around. He's supposed to, you know, supervise. Or he's supposed to, um, uh, what's that word, when somebody's just 
uh, observe. He's supposed to observe. Y'all know once you, I get tongue tied on words. Okay. Oh no, that's his title. He's a supervisor. He's supposed to observe. Okay. So you know that wouldn't have been worth my energy time. I wouldn't have benefited from that. See, if I can't benefit from it, I'm not doing it. Because I didn't. I've been burnt in that area before. Advocating for everyone. Advocating for everyone. The voice for everyone. If we in a huddle talking shit, but then when it's time to just say something, I'm the only one holding the gun. Oh, at this war, we about to have a war. And all my little, all the combat people, they left me. I'm standing in front of all the whole line of, of, of you know, I'm in the war. With all these other people with guns and knives and all these other stuff they're going to be doing. And I'm just standing there. They're gone. Mm -mm. So now. Since that happened to me before. And that was a horrible feeling. A horrible experience. And that was years ago. You hear me? Years. That's how long. I have never done it again. That's why I can say put emphasis on years. I have never done it. I would never do it again. Ever. If I can't benefit from it. Okay. So is that him doing that really or she, whatever? <laughs> them doing that really worth my energy? Is it really worth my time and effort? Am I going to benefit from it? If all that is no, then okay. Smile to you. Honey, you, you will learn how to fake laugh, fake smile, fake energy. Hey, you, you learn quickly. Let some things is what I'm saying is when you when you run into situations. OK, if it's not worth your energy, if it's not worth your time, if you're not going to gain anything from it, that's going to benefit you in any kind of way. Blow it off. Blow it off. And whatever you need to say to yourself to do that, me, I always use livelihood because I have no one. If I needed something paid or rent paid, or I have no one to call on. So your, yours, <coughs> excuse me, excuse me. So yours may not be that. You may be able to say what you want with your job because you know you got parents that'll help you or you know you got a husband or you. I don't have no one to, I don't have that. Okay. So whatever it takes for you to, Think of like me as livelihood. You, it might be, I won't be able to get my, you know, get the bins I wanted. Whatever it is that can calm you down, thinking of your kids or something. Say that to yourself. And then blow it off. Stay focused on the real reason why you're at this job every day. Because sometimes we forget that. We forget the reason why we're working. When you came on the interview, when you applied for the position, when you were sitting there praying, oh, Lord, oh, thank you, Jesus. Please let them, oh, yeah, please let them ask me the questions that I can answer on the interview. Please give me the strength to be strong, whatever. Please let them call me back. Please, on the interview, please just help, oh, Lord Jesus, touch that interviewer. You just be praying. But when you was praying, were you thinking about praying to meet a friend? That was never in your prayer. Your prayer was, oh, Lord, please let them hire me. Please, Lord, let them accept my resume. Please let me pass this interview. You did not once mention a meeting of, oh, and by the way, can I meet a friend? You just, shut the, f you know goddamn well you didn't do that. Whoever over there laughing, I know you're laughing. I know whoever you back there laughing, you know damn well you didn't say it. You just didn't say it. 
He didn't say it. You did not say that. So when you got this job, you didn't come to meet a motherfucking friend. You ain't working hard every day to come to work to see these people. These ain't the... This is not why you're coming to work. To see them. Okay? That ain't why. So we, if you're not going to benefit from being, from advocating for whatever it is, don't do it. Don't even do it. You came to this job to make your dollars. That's what you, that's why you're here. Now, if God bless you and you meet a friend on the way, that's cool too. Sometimes you get into situations, not just in the work field, but in your personal life and anything. If it's not worth the argument, if it's not worth your energy, if it's not worth your time and you're not going to benefit from it in any kind of way, It, just don't show it no goddamn does. Just don't. Just don't. So I did. I was like, well, hey. Hi, oh, y'all, I didn't even see you standing there. No, <laughs> you feel me? And then they was like, I'm not going to give you, you ain't, my, you ain't my woman, you ain't my man, you ain't my cut. I'm not going to give you what you want. I'm not going to fix your plate. I'm not going to make you feel good today, feel secure. I'm not going to give you no confidence today. I, I, I ain't your girl. So when you do the opposite, when you don't let nobody bait you, that gives you a sense of a little bit of power. You feel good because now you have achieved one of your goals. And one of your goals is not to do that type of stuff. You really want to change. You really want to. You, you trying to grow up, up in this thing here called life. You trying to get your bag. You ain't going to let nobody take your bag from you over some bull crap, over, some, over something that they're going through, something they're feeling. And they're not strong enough of a person to change those things on their own. They need to intimidate you. They need to put you down. They need to say they need to step on you to get what they need. Child, no. Don't let yourself be a doormat. Don't allow it. And I ain't saying because it's you. It, it, there's so many ways to handle situations. Have you ever heard that saying? There's more than one way to skin a cat. There's more than one way. I can make up some of those. There's more than one way to fry chicken. Mm hmm. There's more than one way. You can fry with flour. You can fry with dipped in 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 in, in milk with egg. You can fry with no nothing dry. Okay, so look here. So you just do things in a different way. You handle things differently. You look at the situation and you evaluate it. By remembering your worth. 
by remembering what you got on the line. Look, okay, you think about yourself for a change. Now, if I say this, think about your consequences before you do it. I bet you, you, I bet you, anybody out there, if you really thought about the consequences before you did something, whole bunch of things in your life would be different. Hmm. If we think about the consequences, just take a moment and say, well, you know what? If I say this, or if I do this, oh, yeah, honey, uh, if we were to think about the consequences before we do something, a whole bunch of things in our life would be a whole lot different. That's it, y'all. That's it. Okay. I'm getting ready to eat my egg, my two boiled eggs, and go ahead and go inside and, and do what I do. And that's, you know what that is? I'm going to keep a smile on my face, regardless of what I'm going through. Because that helps me feel better. I'm telling you. It takes so many muscles to frown, but it doesn't take very much to smile. And when you smile, it do kind of make you feel. I'm telling you, try it. Try it. Okay. Keep your head up. Keep your nose level. Don't be walking around with your nose all twisted all up because you feeling the way you feeling. It's nobody's fault around you at this place. You just woke up and came here. They ain't got nothing to do with what's, what's going on with you and what happened to you in your past and what your husband did, what your wife did or whatever. Don't be walking around like that because you're feeling the way you feeling. Bringing other people down. Don't do it. Don't take somebody's joy because you ain't got none. So since you ain't got no joy, they can't have none. Now, you know goddamn well that that ain't even right. That ain't even cool. Don't do it. Make today, just try to do something different today. Try to make some kind of small little change in something. Try to achieve one little goal, just one little one. I ain't going to eat a bag of chips today. I don't know. But just try to do something different today. Try to make a small change. Because once you start making small changes, it, it, it starts, you know what I'm saying? You be wanting to make some more changes because you felt so good about that little small one. It just did something to you. Okay? You made this small little change and now you you feeling a certain type of way. Well, let me make another change so I can really feel better. And then you just going to want to call. You just want to keep making changes because you're feeling so good and you like the way you're feeling. Have that attitude. Have that attitude, y'all. That's it, y'all. Look here. I will catch you in the next video. Peace.